Hey guys, welcome to the Step Outside YouTube channel. If you want to see catches like this, stick around, like and subscribe. Here's what's coming up. Well, it's nice and early in the morning. We're out here on board Gold Coast River Charles with Captain Clint Ansell. This guy, regular for us, and I'll tell you what, he knows all the rivers and tributaries around this southeast Queensland region. And of course, what we're doing today, we've got a bunch of yabbies. Now, there's been a lot of flood waters pushing out of the creeks and rivers over the past month and a bit. And of course, there's still a bit of debris about, but the fresh water is still pushing down slowly, but the salt's making its way up. So we thought to ourselves, let's go and wet a line. We'll just test the waters and see what's on the chew. And of course, right about now, we've put the pots out. The baits are about to go out, and fingers crossed, there's a few fish on the chair. It's a double hookup, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> hey? Double hookup, Dave. Really. It's like uh, Gold Coast River Charters times two. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit better. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing. You do get a lot of brim around these systems as we move into uh, well after a fresh water. Clint, your line is always over mine, mate. Or, was I, or am I throwing over you? <laughs> that's a good thing about when you are fishing after a a lot of water's moved out of whether it's flood waters or anything like that you're not going to fish when it's really strong currents of course but you know give it a couple of weeks and things start to settle down like now still a lot of debris pushing through the creeks here and the rivers as you can see mainly due to the larger tides we've got coming through at the moment as well so a lot of the sticks and logs over the past couple of weeks have washed up onto the banks when you get those bigger tides it moves them back out into the river system so it's still not advisable for skiing or anything like that until the water is cleared. And if you are moving up here at night time, the last thing you'd want to do is collect one of these larger logs. It wouldn't be a good outcome on the leg of your engine. But the brim, they love this kind of water. Stinky baits, or in this case, we're using nippers or yabbies. Yabbies are a, a fantastic bait to use. Look at those. Absolutely stunning bait. So, we'll get this hook out of him, and get another line into the water. Here you go, champ. Gave me my bait back. Well, the beauty is there, Clint, I'm over your rod and I'm, I'm 22 feet away from you. I can just put my rod over yours and we're not tangled. Look at that. Oh, I love, I love the bend. Yeah. Mate, no, this rod, if the fish is three inches long, the rod fights it like it's eight foot long. Great. Hey, nice fish. Yeah. Yes. That's a fat brim. Yeah, fat brim. Start off the little ones, they're getting bigger now, but yeah, after this rain, you just get some really good numbers of big brim here as well. It's a fantastic fishery. It's all been fired up and uh, 
You know, sometimes we joke about brim, but good old staple Aussie fish, aren't they? Bread and butter fish found all Absolutely. around the country, yeah. and they don't mind a bit of brackish water either. They don't mind at all. This mm. water is actually really fresh on top and yep. salty underneath, but you can see it's got to be salty for them to be there. So. Mm. Because normally I'd use a stinky bait if it's predominantly fresh. That's to, right, Because yeah. they've changed yeah. their sensory organs, you know, the sensors to pick up the bait that they're going to feed on. Yep, that's uh, that's mine. <laughs> you can have your bloody brim. <laughs> Look at that for a cracker. This is what it's about, you know. I tell you what. Look at that. Knowing that the fish are out after a good fresh is awesome. I'm happy. The dog's happy. Clint's happy. He caught a brim. I'm <laughs> Sorry, mate. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just pointing out the obvious. Okay. I'm going to show you guys something that's called split the lip. Now this is a big fish, we're going to keep this one of course. So what I've got to do is when it swallows the hook and you can't get it out, is you come in under here and it's called split the lip. So you put your finger up there, split the lip, your line will then travel down that section here and you'll be able to get the hook out like that, push the hook down and out it comes. Yes, you can put the fish away and let him go if you wanted to, that'll heal up if it's a smaller one. Uh, but for the larger fish there, obviously we're gonna put him on some ice and uh, that is coming home for a beautiful dinner for me. Whiting. Stoked. Just happy I didn't get a grip. <laughs> Sorry mate, I'm just, I'm just saying. So I'm running a couple of rigs here. I've got uh, the alvey. I love using an alvey when targeting whiting or brim in the estuaries. Uh, the boys have been giving me lots of stick and curry about this. They think it's a surf rod. Uh, look, it, it is around 18 feet long, but it's okay. It's, it's not 18 feet, fellas. It's around 10 foot. So I used to like using the 10 foot six estuary rods, six inch alvey. Uh, I'm just gonna cast this one here out. And just leave that there. That stays flat and of course less resistance on the rod. But I want to go through the gear. Now Clint has given me this one. This is the little Sienna 2500. Wonderful rod there and reel from Shimano and a nice little aqua tip. So the aqua tip has, basically it's got a solid glass tip up here so it's really flexible as you can see. And of course we've also got going down to the hollow glass. It is a two piece which allows us to take it apart and of course for Clint to stow it up a lot easier. So on his charters, this is the sort of gear he'll run for this. But then he does a lot of mangrove jack fishing. He does a lot of blade fishing using the Eco Gear uh, ZX's. So he's targeting tusk fish. So wherever he's going, whatever he's using, he's changing his gear up for that application. So in this particular case here, we're using a bait keeper, a size four hook, you can see him there. And we're running about six pound litre, going up to a little black barrel swivel. And of course the sinker size is about a size two or three, just to work with the current. So the yabbies we're running here are a beautiful bait that he pumped up yesterday. All we're gonna do here is put the hook into the tail, thread it through the belly system of the yabby, and then straight into his head, and just give it a bit of a push. Pull the tail over the eye of the hook. You can't see the hook at all. I'll take off the nipper. Because there's a bit of current here, I wanna get as less resistance as I can to keep the bait closer to the bottom. Out it goes. Into the holder. Job's done. So you can catch a fish or three.
Mate, I've noticed that when we're fishing here, Clint, the first thing you want to do is put out two anchors. Yes. What, why is that, mate? Well, yeah, it's just in this sort of wind and tide, you're not swinging around. So your, your bait's on swinging over the bottom, your line's on crossing, you're just sitting nice and still. And uh, you can keep feeding the lines out without tangling, but yeah, it's just a very good way to fish. You're not swinging around. Your boat will swing around, which gets really annoying too. You don't mm. see the bites when it goes slack. It drags the sinker over the bottom, which then can put the wary whiting off. So double anchoring is very effective. Do you find, I notice that we're sort of on the shallow side of the river. The other side's quite uh, deep. Yeah. A lot of current out there as well. Very strong so, current. So is it better to, to fish on these corners where there's not much current for the fish to have less resistance and they can school up a lot freely? That's exactly right. I mean, fish like us, they're lazy. They don't want to work too hard to stay in their position and feed. So yep. they can get out of the strong flow a bit, which today we've got a bigger tide leading up to the full moon and approaching the middle of the run out of the tide now. So it runs very hard out wider. So that's where you want to be when it is running as it, at its hardest is on mm. the inside. Mate, we've got some yabbies here uh, that you also like using worms. Yeah, yeah, if I, can, if I can get them, yes. <laughs> and they're, they're harder to get though, aren't they? Uh, just at the moment, yeah. We'll be able to get them later this week. They usually sort of come out if you're buying them just in time for the weekend. Yeah. And also because of the floods, it's probably been hard to sort of get to them as well, the guys that catch them. But if you can't get blood worms, which is the top peak, then um, live yabbies are, are the next best, I'd say. But uh, local bait, like, you know. That's it. River local. prawns might work, but realistically, you know, your squid, your pilchards, all that stuff, forget that. Forget that, yeah. You know. The fresher, the better. The whiting are pretty picky. And even your bigger brim and grunter and things, they'll prefer fresh live bait over a frozen, frozen bait out of the freezer, yeah, definitely. There you go, and that can also involve a lot of hard yakka. Oh yeah. When you're <laughs> digging oh, yeah. your own worms or pumping your own yabbies. Well, that's right, it was high tide this morning, so I pumped the yabbies yesterday afternoon and looked after them overnight in the esky, changed the water overnight, got up during the night to change the water, kept an, a a uh, cold container in there to keep them cool and they're still fresh as now so it's looking after the bait and they're pulling the fish yeah that's right yeah we're getting bites um it's sort of coming through in waves which is typical of, of how you sort of just sit and wait you don't have to move you can move if you want to there's two ways of doing it you can either sit in one spot and wait for the bites or you can move but knowing where we are now on the edge of the uh, current here it's it's where fish are going to hang for now and say it drops off later and it's quite not much flow yeah you have to yep. go out a bit wider and, and find more flow so it's just finding where the fish are at any stage of the tide that's it no other way other way <laughs> yeah that's it play the benny hill music <laughs> you're the crow pot <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big whiting. Oh. Stingray? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now don't get that confused there, Dave, with my whiting and your stingray in the in the esky, mate. Let them fight it for half an hour. Oh, quality kids. <laughs> He has two. Wow. Are you gonna have the sting, Ray? <laughs> yeah, no, you mate. Oh, Dave, I'm just thinking of you, buddy, that's all. <laughs> sting <rays. laughs> Hey. Oh, nice whiting, hey? There we go. That is a nice fish. Yeah, that's not bad. I'll tell you what, we've got a bunch of the whiting now. We had some bycatch coming through and we've also caught a bunch of brim moved a couple of different locations, but that's what it's all about when you are fishing in a built-up area, such as, whoa, whoa, such as here. Oh, missed him, he's done me. Yeah, that was a big fish, absolutely crucified. But just having different locations and all that set up there, and that's the game plan that Clint does here. When you are coming up to Australia's playground, the holiday playground, the Mecca being the Gold Coast, make sure you give this bloke a buzz of course, Gold Coast River Charter is going to get you out there and get amongst some quality catches. And regardless of what you do catch, you're going to have a bloody good time. Great bunch of blacks. Now here's some tips to catching whiting. I like to use a six inch alvey matched with a 10 foot six estuary rod. Combo it up, a perfect outfit. 
Alternatively, a 1 to 3 kilo Shimano spin combo. Line class, 6 pound and a size 4 bait keeper hook. Fish the tide changes, that'll be worthwhile. And fresh local bait is hard to beat. Also, work the edges of the flats. Good luck. And of course, thanks for watching Step Outside YouTube channel for lots of cooking and fishing action. Like, subscribe, and of course, comment for more catches like this and cooking recipes.